All right, you guys, welcome back to the Draken Station. I am excited, especially today, because we wrapped up season one. It should be uploading soon. And we are doing season two, episode one. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. If you have any comments, please write it down below. We will love to entertain it. And you can catch us on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts. Now, without further ado, I want to introduce you to my co-host, the man, the thriller from Manila, Jamie. Hey guys, how's it going? Today we have Aries. Aries is from Utah. Utah. And because of uh, Aries being from Utah, that comes with all the um, stereotypes that come with it. He's the embodiment of that. Oh. So just FYI. So, you know, (laughs) we're going to do that. He is the embodiment of every Utah Salt Lake City stereotype that you can have. Okay. So, h- how's the family? <laughs> <laughs> Families. <laughs> so, Aries um, actually was, uh, uh, is actually part of the Cajun Navy. Wow. In all seriousness. Uh, is that how you both met? Yes, we met down in uh, Beaumont, Texas. Uh, Aries was uh, driving down there. Uh, during one of his drug routes, and he decided to stop by and help out before unloading a kilo, couple of kilos of cocaine down in Miami. Nice. So um, he went down to uh, uh, Beaumont to help out a little bit. Um, he didn't sell there um, because you know it would be inappropriate at the time. Yeah. But um, you know, you know, but you know, I'm obviously joking. But in all seriousness, he's also a uh, United States veteran, uh, U.S. Marine Corps. Um, and he's part of the Secret Squirrel Squad, Triple S Squad. <laughs> That's what he does, you know. He 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 killed a lot of squirrels, <laughs> and he didn't even use a gun. He stepped on them. <laughs> so like you know, there you go for you you know anti gun freaks. He didn't use a gun at all. He just stepped on the squirrels. So yeah. Um. So Aries, uh, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. So tell us, tell us a little bit about, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Like, uh, you know, um, before I go any further, like, tell us a little bit about. Give us some background. Yeah, man. Um, So I was in the Marine Corps for uh, eight years, uh, from 2001 to 2009. Um, Outside of that, I did like some security contracting stuff uh, with Triple Canopy Dine Corps. And then uh, recently, I guess recently, I don't know. Uh, past five years, um, I've been working with a group called Chief Dogs of Salt Lake City, um, and we've been fighting human trafficking out here in Salt Lake ever since. Um, I like long walks on the beach. Uh, sometimes I cry in my sock drawer at night, and my favorite pie is razzleberry. <laughs> razzleberry is good. I prefer boysenberry myself because it's a hybrid of blueberry and raspberry. Mm. Interesting. You know, it's like man. It's a man-made creation. You know, I never do that. So you are. I see you're drinking uh, Tang right now. Is it any good? Uh, um, it's delicious, it's nutritious, and this also prevents me from getting too drunk. <laughs> so, you know, um, how difficult is it to get drunk in, in, in Salt Lake? Is it, you know, kind of a uh, effort to go about doing that, or...? It depends. If he's in Provo, it's very hard. <laughs> no, okay, so I'm actually... <laughs> I'm actually downtown Salt Lake, so Provo, it's... I, I don't even know if they know what alcohol is down there. No, you, you, um, they don't know. They're, I mean, I think they get drunk on warm Pepsi a lot. Warm Pepsi, hell yeah, man. It's yeah, party. Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> Bubble Bill. No, Utah has the weirdest, like, I, I don't even think we know what the hell we're doing when it comes to alcohol. So, we just barely pass laws where we can actually have the higher point beers, so it's not like that watered down 3 2 crap anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, which is really, really good because we've got some killer distilleries up here, a lot of beer makers up here that are, uh, you know, bringing out some, like, pretty good high-point beers that are really, really delicious. But then if you go into a bar, you've got this weird thing that you can only have, like, a shot or, like, 2.5 ounces worth in a mixed drink, and then that's it for uh-huh. drinks. So, like, you can't even carry two shots unless someone else is there with you um, because uh, we're, we're dumb. Our so, government is dumb. So I heard, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm often wrong, which is fine, about everything, you know, family, dating, politics. I mean, I'm pretty much wrong on everything. But what I've heard is that when you go into a liquor store in Salt Lake and you want to buy alcohol, you actually have to provide them with your name and um, like driver's license and they take it down, right? Or no? Is that a total myth? No, no. So, 
you just have to show your ID that you're uh, um, over 21. They don't even scan it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like, what about nightclubs, dude? Like, how would you go out? Like, let's say you wanted to, you know, go out and dance and, you know, meet some chicks. Or how would you, how would you go about doing that, man? Like, you know what I mean? So, actually, I worked at a uh, nightclub, a uh, dance club down in Salt Lake called Area 51. Mm -hmm. um, it's a total, like, goth industrial type club. I was there for seven years as a security manager. Um, it's it's not that hard. Like, we used to have, like, memberships where you just pay the year membership and come in, but then they change the liquor laws. Um, all you have to do is just show them your ID. Most of the dance clubs down here are going to be like 18 and over. But we've got everything from like golf to techno industrial all the way to like rap and hip hop. Uh, you know, top 40 dance clubs. We've got like the swingers bars. Uh, there's fetish nightclubs, <laughs> um, metalhead clubs, stuff like that. It's, it's it, for, as, for as like straight laced Mormon is like Utah is, we've, we've got some freaks out here, definitely. So tell us a little bit more about those uh, fetish bars. <laughs> I'm curious, like what? I have never been, so you know. So, <laughs> allegedly. I have never been, you know. <laughs> no, so yeah. I, um, Area actually runs uh, probably our biggest fetish night. There's two other bars in Salt Lake, uh, the Moose Knuckle. Yes, that is correct, the Moose Knuckle. I love it. Um, <laughs> and then uh, there was another one called Access where we'd have, uh, you know, fetish nights that were kind of scattered around Sanctuary. I used to run one, too. Um, it's, they've got demos out there, so you've got, like, rope bondage demos and, like, vacuum beds and, like, the needle play stuff. Uh, people dress up, they've got like their theme, so you've got the PVC latex one, uh, the past one, which was, uh, let's see, this last Saturday, it's the last Saturday of the month, um, they did, uh, what was it, the gas mask one, just to get everybody to like, you know, wear their masks inside the club, hmm. so it kind of worked out. Well, what about the swingers clubs, what about those, how do those work out? <laughs> Well, I mean, if, as long as you got like the deuce big and there, like you know, t-shirt with like the or the button-up shirt that's like buttoned to like about here, you know, with the chest hair and stuff, uh, then you can go out to uh, a couple of those clubs. So, so can you tell the the uh, you know our fans what a swingers club is? Uh, yes, they have play sets in there where people go wee back and forth on like swings. Uh, <laughs> so, you um, know, is is it a good time to go to such a place? I mean, it's, it's a great time, you know, uh, most of the time you're sitting on someone's lap and there's like a hard thing going right up your butt, but uh, that's oh. only if you wear the mini skirt, high heels, and pink underwear. So it's kind of like Christmas? Yes, it's not good at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that time you invited me over to your house. That was... Okay. Santa's lap will never be the same. <laughs> so, um, well, anyway, you know, like, uh, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, the work that you do. You know, and, and also just like, you know, um, you know, it's pretty amazing that you and your team have actually gone out and broken up pedophile rings, you know, and worked with local law enforcement, um, you know, your, your ABC organizations in the federal government to, to break these. How did you get into that? How did you get into that uh, line of work? So actually, I did a, uh, um, it was with Oak Lake Technologies, uh, they did a, a mock, uh, trial thing that we do for you know military they they do them here stateside um it was from our shock that we we're down at grantsville out here in utah um somehow I, like they just started advertising everywhere there's this guy named rudy gonzalez uh, he runs a group called cert ministries down in southern california um he came out with his family he's been doing it for a long 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 time uh he's actually my senior uh in uh, second battalion reconnaissance with marines and uh he he went cop and then he started doing this human trafficking or anti-human trafficking thing and he showed us kind of what was going on and i kept talking to him I'm like hey you know show me show me show me i want to i want to join you guys i'll start a certain ministries out here um he just never got back to me so i was like screw it i learned how to do and i shit you not this is my mentality i learned how to do photoshop because of youtube so i figured i could just you know at least i've got some of the skill set and i started out my own group out here in uh, 2015 um just kind of doing the same thing. I mean, like, uh, we, the AG's office here in Utah, they started the Trafficking and Humans Task Force a year before mine. Um, thankfully, they were very understanding because I got about six arrests yeah. uh, when I first started this. Um, but uh, we just kind of started working with the agencies and we were like, hey, we're here, we're doing stuff. Um, kind of flew a little bit under the radar with uh, Operation Underground Railroad because they're kind of really big and popular here. Um, and we're like, uh, no, we're not, not really with them, you know? Kind of played it that way, so we got a little bit more uh, lenience, I guess, uh, without actually saying it. But uh, just kind of started doing it, started doing the same stuff, watching a lot of Dateline NBC. Um, 
you know, kind of mocking out uh, some of the reverse things and stuff. And did a lot of research, so it was pretty fun. You know, um, how prevalent is the human trafficking, you know, here in the United States, let alone Utah? Like, when I think human trafficking, I don't think Utah. <laughs> I think the, you know, uh, bigger cities, Los Angeles, New York City, San Francisco. Um, I, I, when I think human trafficking, I don't think South... Uh, I don't think no one thinks Utah. Yeah, right? Salt no. Lake City? No. I don't. No. So how prevalent is it? Like, you know, how, how bad of a problem is it in, in, in well, let's, let's start in Salt Lake. How bad of a problem is it in, in, in Salt Lake? It's, it's actually a pretty, pretty bad problem. So there's, there's this whole different animal, which is, which is Utah. And it's kind of a weird, weird state, not just because of, uh, you know, like the, the religious influence of it. Um, we deal with two different things. Number one, Utah has the I-70, I-15 corridor. So kind of places like port towns like down in Los Angeles, San Francisco, um, you know, New York, where they're, you know, incoming, outgoing type thing. That's what you have to look at with Utah is because there's really only a couple of roads, like main, main highways that go east to west and they all run through Utah. I mean, that's why they call us crossroads of the west. But um, we deal with a lot of traffic coming back from, you know, back east where they're moving girls uh, over to Las Vegas for the Super Bowl. Um, or they're moving them, you know, the Asian massage parlors and stuff. They're moving them up through our network. Or the network runs through up our, uh, uh, our corridor. Um, we've been fighting a case like that since uh, 2014. Um, it's just kind of a really interesting dynamic. But then the other play that we have is the religious aspect because you've got a lot of uh, LDS people that are extremely like tight Christiany, and they do this weird thing of, okay, well, you're, my kid's gay. I either set them to conversion therapy camp. Or we're going to kick them out of the house. When they kick them out of the house, they're homeless, and we've got a huge, huge, bad, bad problem with the homeless community out here. When it comes to pimps, we've got, uh, and I'm going to straight up call them out because I really don't give a shit, uh, the Sin City, uh, Sin City Barons. Uh, it's not a totally different group than Salt Lake City Barons. Those guys are legit. The Sin City Barons, they're a motorcycle club out there. Uh, one percenters, and we've got Crips out here. Uh, everything from like 21st Street Crips to, uh, um, I heard uh, MS-13 is huge into trafficking. Um, they're down on a place called North Temple. It's funny uh, because um, it's, one of, like, the, it's, it's one of the tracks. It's Sorry, funny. Be, it's it's funny because y what you're describing, I don't think nobody in America thinks of Utah in that light. Now, yeah. it's scary at the same time because if Utah is going through this, I can only imagine for our own city of Los Angeles. Right. We we got to be ten times more than. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because LA has the port. You know, LA has this gigantic port. We've had issues with it since it, you know, was constructed. Um, you know, all sorts of things go through LA port. It's it's massive. If anybody has seen a cargo ship, you know, all those cargo containers on there, mm -hmm. you know, it looks like thousands of containers. How do you effectively search that? Yeah. It's impossible. It cannot be done. So things are going to get yeah. through, you know, but for, for me, when I first heard of what Aries was doing in Salt Lake, I was like, wow, Salt Lake of all places. That's, yeah. that's what uh, piqued my curiosity, you know, so... You know, is it uh, an, an Asian thing? Are the are the girls being trafficked tra from Asia, or are they just like you know, have they been kidnapped from other parts of the state? How does how does this work? You know, everywhere, man, absolutely everywhere. So, I uh, there's a couple different dynamics. The majority of the the I guess internal problems that we have are because the LGBT kids get kicked out mm -hmm. and they're picked up and then they're dispersed everywhere, like okay. they're taken out of the state. We also have the other option or the other problem of uh, like with the Asians that come in and we've got all these massage parlors set up, but the problem with the massage parlors is because it's a cultural thing because they've got control of their visas. They don't want to knock out their bosses. They don't want to knock out. Uh, there's one guy specifically, his name's Uncle Jet out here. Mm -hmm. um, he runs a network all the way down from Texas all the way up to Washington state. And when you mean network, what do you mean by, by network? Is that like... He, he, so uh, we had a big bus probably about like, uh, I think it was like 2012, 2013, um, where he had actually gotten arrested with a lady. She's still in prison. Uh, the network of what I'm talking about is he owns uh, 136 massage parlors. Whoa, damn. Jeez, and that's dude. just him. That doesn't include his partners that like run everywhere else. I mean, in Utah, also, like, 136, right? You said Utah, 136? 136 uh, that we found nationwide before we turned it over to Department of Homeland. Damn. So out of 100, I mean, look, when someone starts owning that many massage parlors, shouldn't that raise a red flag to somebody? You know, one of our organizations, alphabet organizations, where they, 
This guy's running around, he's opening up massage parlors in every state. He's got 136 minimum right now. Like, shouldn't we look into this kind of shit? You know what I mean? It's the, 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 the trick part about the cases with these ones is you have to, like, we see the network, we know who he is, we know what he's doing, but prosecutable evidence to be able to take him to court, put him away, that's, we just don't have the witnesses, we don't have the people that are willing to testify against him. Plus, there's always a language barrier, even if we overcome the language barrier, it's, they, they still won't talk. So it's, it's a longer case, it's a much more pain in the ass case, even on a federal level. Right, because the, uh, the victims themselves don't want to be sent back to their country, they still probably think you know, this is a better alternative than, you know, where they came from, which is pretty sad, I think, you know, or yeah. they, they fear for their families' lives back home, etc. You know, um, so I take it that a lot of them are, are, are Asian. It sounds like a lot of them are, are from Asia, you know, Southeast Asia, perhaps, or because, you know, I'm thinking massage it's, parlor. So yeah, it's kind of a weird mix. So we've uh, like if it's the Asian parlors, then yes, every single one of them uh, like that we see out here. It's it's the same artwork, same graphics on the outside of the windows, uh, same like flashing lights and all that crap, same hours. We know exactly what those ones are. Those ones are all Asian. Um, we also do deal with a lot of uh, uh, migrant workers. So if we're dealing, instead of like the sex trafficking side, we're flipped over into uh, forced labor. We do deal with a lot of that from, you know, the Mex uh, like the Mexico border mm -hmm. um, of the coyotes bringing them up and having the illegal immigrants, but they're held on to, you know, their visas and stuff like that. We had a condominium that we shut down that was getting built, uh, you know, all with uh, forced labor. Um, a lot of the miners are going to be uh, in between uh, uh, like Caucasian to uh, Hispanic. Mm. So, how do you how do you track them down? Do you do a false uh, profile and contact contact them that way, or you just been investigating for so long? And then, well, I guess my question is, when you do like a sting operation, what does that in detail? Mm -hmm. So if we're doing, because uh, we do get two different kinds. We do a sting and then we also do a reverse sting. Um, with the sting operation, it's just like anything that you'd see on, uh, you know, to catch a predator. Um, you know, we've worked with uh, creep catchers in the past, Bloodhound, Sheepdog, um, you know, a couple of the other groups where, you know, we just play, you know, 14-year-old Bessie who's, <laughs> you know, looking for a good time. And Joe Blow comes in and he wants, uh, you know, he's, I mean, they, these guys are bold. Mm. These guys every time ask, you know, hey, am I, are you a cop? No, I'm not a cop. Oh, okay, and then they show up anyway. Um, wow. We had one dude with cops out front that were in the middle of arresting some other dude because he showed up early and he just walked right up to the hotel room and knocked on the door. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> um, but the reverse thing, it's kind of weird and interesting. Like, we use uh, things like List Crawler, uh, Double List, which is like what Backpage used to be um, and what Craigslist used to be. Uh, we use a lot of things like TikTok and Kick. Um, to be able to go and find these girls. The majority of the time, we can actually just walk out there, especially at North Temple. It's bad, bad, bad. Um, we can just walk out there and point out, hey, that girl looks underage, that girl looks underage. We just go ahead and make the approach. Cause, um, I used to be a lot more sneaky about it, a lot more like kind of, you know, like do the costume, play a homeless dude, try and make contact that way. I'm just, I'm, I'm too old and I don't give a shit anymore. So I just walk straight up to them. Most of everybody down North Temple knows who I am. I want to ask a question. Um... Now, I, I imagine a lot of these girls are scared, so they don't want to, like, lead you on that I need help, right? But do some of them want help or some of them just, I'm so scared, just don't come my way? Uh, it depends. I mean, every single one of them is scared, especially if I come walking up to them because any male is going to look like that's the dude who raped me last time. Oh, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what what demographic, what race, what's, you know, anything. It's that's the guy who raped me last night. That's how they kind of view it um, in their head. So it's harder for me to make as a male to make an approach versus have a female. But then we're also playing in the factor of sometimes females are the ones who groom them and bring them into that uh, type, that type of lifestyle. But when they see us and they know like we've, we've built up our reputation to where they know we're not law enforcement, they're a lot more willing to talk to us. The biggest thing that we have when it comes to them being scared is them leaving life because all of their possessions, all of their clothes, all of their things that they have, and they're about to go into something they don't know or they don't know anything. So, you know, it's a pretty sad situation because, you know, um, <laughs> it's exploitation is taking advantage of people when they're most vulnerable, right? So the people yep. that are doing this are already taking advantage of someone that's, 
you know, um, down on their luck. They probably got issues with their families. They're scared. Um, they're looking for a better life, and they're exploited. Man, it's terrible. And um, you know, it's very saddening. You know, what's what's? Have you ever felt like in danger while doing this work? Have you ever actually, you know, gotten into confrontation with anybody? Like, you know, what's? Oh, yeah. Um, so I've been shot three times, stabbed once, and uh, got raped once. In this, in this industry, in this industry. Yeah, yeah. In the past five years. Oh man, that's terrible. Shoot, like you know, were the people uh, uh, brought to justice, or how? Oh that... yeah. Okay. Yeah, they. they uh, one of the times I've got shot, uh, they pulled a gun out of the couch when we had already made the raid. Cops were in the house. Um, a couple other times I've been shot at uh, directly across the street. Got hit once in the arm and then once in the back. Um, stabbed. That was when we made entry into the door. Uh, the time I was raped, we. Like it separated ways. I thought we were clear. We didn't realize we were being stalked just because we were so worn out and tired. Didn't keep up second. Got hit right in the back of the head with the lead pipe. So. Oh man, that's just crazy, man. So why why continue doing the work? Like what what motivates you? What drives you to continue? Uh, you know, doing what you do. Um. So, <laughs> I. That is because I am actually a uh, former trafficking victim myself from when I was about five. Because um, I was uh, kidnapped and then uh, taken down to California, but uh, um, that's kind of my main thing. And then, like, I just I never want anyone to go through that themselves. Yeah. Um, I've also uh, got this very selfish thing of that I've got a uh, uh, 15 year old daughter, and if she goes disappearing, I need to know how to find her. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, man. Like, you know, uh, I I know you've had you know uh, kind of rough story. I knew that. But so, you know, I was trying to add levity <laughs> to the situation. I mean, it wasn't left. Yeah, they used women, so. <laughs> you know? You know, uh, um, I, I just don't get the mind of someone that can do that, that, that can that can kidnap somebody. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I, I can't fathom it. Like, what place do you have to be to allow that kind of evil to, to take over and allow you to do that? You know, like, like, what's your assessment of that, man? Like, you know, you've been around us your whole life. Like, what, what, what drives these sickos? To, to do something like that to another person, to a child. Well, it's it's kind of a weird thing. It's they don't like any of the Johns that we've talked to, any of the guys that uh, um, you know that are the perpetrators that actually the to the traffickers. Uh, they don't view those people as human. Like they've got their they've got their own close knit group. My family's human. My friends are human. Like the people I meet, the the kids that I you know traffic or whatever type of a thing. In their mentality, they're thinking, "Okay, this kid isn't human. They're, they're that's just as good as livestock." Hmm. And it's just something. It's just a way to make money. It's just something to do. So they, it's it's a weird, it's a weird type of dynamic, and it's it's almost like narcissistic, like sociopathic type thing coming from a psychological standpoint. Yeah. Um, and I just I don't I don't understand. I get it, but I don't understand how that can be a thing because I'm just not that way. So, like in your assessment, like what's is there a profile of, of someone like that? Like, what's what's their background? What do they go through to get to that point? You know, they're like you. They're like me. They're like uh, you know the guy at the grocery store. It's it's I've I've had conversations with traffickers where I'm like, dude, if you weren't a trafficker, like you and I would be best friends because they've liked cars. They've you know Xbox and you know going out there softing. There's guys who have volunteered, you know, like with what you and I did. I had one guy who was uh, uh, that I talked to. He was down there with Katrina, mm-hmm. and he volunteered for months down there. And it's like, uh, but yet you're doing this crap. Um, you know, I mean, even when we were down there in Beaumont, like uh, when we snuck off in the middle of the night, me and my, the two of my crew, yeah, uh, we were out there doing anti-human trafficking operations in Beaumont. You know, it's and it's, some of them were, you know, the rescuers down there. It's it could be uh, the guy that you hate just because he's, you know, a slime ball. It, there's there's no set demographic you can't ever pick out. Like, hey, this person's a bad guy. That person's a bad guy. It's weird. Yeah, you know, that's the scary part is that you never you can't see coming. Right? Yeah. Are there are there signs? Are there clues based on their behavior that you know this guy's got, you know, uh, 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 potential to, to to do such things? You know, like, you know, things they say. Prior to you knowing, you know, there's nothing, no, no, no tells. Um, outside of that, honestly, like having like a, I don't know how to actually answer that because like if you're if you're just in a 
a normal, like, everyday setting where you're not dealing with it, you don't, you, you can't really tell. Um, I've been doing this for five years on, like, a consistent day-to-day -day basis, and I'm getting to the point where I can walk down the street and be like, no, there's something wrong with that dude. Mm. Or there's something wrong with that girl. Like, I can just pick them out, and it's just a, I don't know if it's just a, I, there's, like, some subtle mannerisms or something like that, but, I mean, there's, there's something that sometimes you can just pick them out. So, is that why you decided to go into the Marine Corps as well? Is like, you know, you had to, you know, feel like you were, you know, contributing to, to, to justice in a way, I guess? You know what I mean? Like, you know. No. So, <laughs> the, the Marine Corps is like actually kind of a, with a, I wanted to sign up with the military because my dad was military. And uh, he's, he's like probably like my biggest hero ever. Um, I wanted to go to the Marines because I absolutely hate bow ties. Okay. Like actually, I hate I hate tying ties. That's I never wanted to do that. Plus, uh, they're, they're, I mean, their uniforms are just like really kick ass. I just always was like, oh, hey, cool, you know, Marine Corps recruiters. Let's go talk to those guys and said anything else. Uh, but that's why I joined up with them. It was uh, it was it was a way for me to get out of the gang life and uh, a way like way out from what I was doing, so I could you know get into something better. So, you know, eight years is a long time to be in the military, right? Eight, eight years. Most people do what two years, four years, and then they're out. You know, for you to do eight years, that's, you know, pretty significant amount of time. It's, you know, better part of a decade. I mean, yeah. Um, I wish I would have made, you know, the full 20 because, you know, that would have been coming up uh, next year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would have the retirement stuff like that, which would have been good. But, you know, kids took priority. Eight years was good. Um, it was a good run. I wish I would have done a little bit longer. Kind of like looking back on the way everything played out. But, mm -hmm. you know, I can't complain. Okay. So a lot of the guys, like the bulk force of them will do like two years, four years. And then, like, after the Marine Corps, is that when you kind of got out, you know, decompressed for a little bit and then got into this line of work, or what did you do? Yeah, so I got out uh, in 2009, and then uh, it wasn't until 2015 okay. that uh, I started this up. Okay, right on. Um, when we first met you, me, and uh, 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 JR down in Boma, what, what triggered that? You know, um, how did you find out about the Cajun Navy and the needs? Of, of uh, you know the Gulf region, what what drove you to go down to assist people down in uh, um, Hurricane Harvey? Uh, so I was actually working at uh, a place called SoFi uh, Social Finance. I do like all the loans and stuff. I was like, okay, well I got to do something. There was just like this hole that I had to get down there, and I don't know why. Um, so I called up uh, um, my IT tech person in the uh, um, in my group, and I was like, hey, we're going to Belmont. Mm -hmm. And he was like, okay, cool. So we went down, uh, we found uh, one of my coworkers, her sister came down with us um, as well. She provided most of the gas, which was kind of cool. But uh, uh, we started out in um, downtown yeah. and we got caught up with Texas, what was it, uh, Texas Hurricane Rescue or something like that. Um, and then we actually found out about uh, um, Dennis uh, Rooster. Yeah, and I love Rooster, like, man. Okay, Rest in peace. Need, you know? Yeah, we need help. So... We came up to Beaumont. Well, okay, we need help for the day. Cool. We just started helping out. That's yeah. kind of how we just joined up with you guys. You know what's interesting, man? Like how we all sort of uh, got drawn. Because like I was also at a crossroads in my life, and you know I was just sort of like you know drifting. You know life was all right, but there was something missing, right? And and I told this to uh, uh, Jr. the other day too, when you know he was on the podcast. I said, hey man, uh, when Vince went, it was kind of like, dude, why am I letting Vince go by himself? You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to sit here and allow Vince to walk into, uh, you know, danger zone while I'm sitting here just comfortable. So then I said, you know what? I, I took the time off and I told my, uh, my boss at the time, who was a Marine, I said, hey, you know what? I'm going, I'm going to Beaumont, man. I'm going to Houston uh, for the relief effort. I don't know when I'm going to be back. And, you know, him being a Marine said, you know what? You got it. Permission granted. I said, thank you, sir. And, you know, I was on the road. How long did it take you to get to, um, to Texas from Utah? 25 hours straight driving. Straight driving? That's the only time we stopped was for gas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I, 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 think, I think it took me a couple days, too, but I stopped, man. You know, I, I, I stopped by roadside hotel, you know, because I, I, I didn't want to drive 12 hours, get tired, and crash, right? Yeah. And then, you know, ruin the whole thing. So, I, you know, I played it safe. I went, I drove um, uh, for 12 hours, like, just right at 12 hours, rested, drove an over 12 hours, rested. It took me about two, two and a half days. To get down to nice yeah but you know incredible experience because like you know everyone that i've met there have continued to be friends and we've all continued to 
interestingly enough, like work together in some weird way. You know, it hasn't stopped. Yep. You know, like for instance, you know, Jr. We work, we work with, you know, yourself. You know, I, I remember I, uh, you know, put you in touch with uh, someone that needed a little hand down there. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's just been crazy how how fate works. You know, and you know, it seems like everyone was sort of like in that place in their lives, right? Like they're sort of like in that weird um, uh, flux, you know, uh, crossroads, and everyone just took that opportunity to to to, to change. It was pretty weird. You know. I feel bad about Rooster, yeah, though, man. Roosters just suck, man. You know, it's like I guess that's another story. <laughs> you know, poor guy, man. God, you know. Um, but yeah, man. You know, it's it's it it it, it was a strange situation for me um, being down there. Uh, uh, honestly, I, I had never been to Texas prior to that, so you know, um, I I saw that uh, Texas is quite a different culture compared to California, right? Um, but it was also refreshing to see that people from all over the country uh, came down to Texas to, uh, for aid, right, for the, uh, to help out. And, you know, I, I thought that was like what America's about, right? We're the United States, you know, the states are united. So ultimately, when, when things go bad, you know, we have to look out for each other. You know, we could be very different and each state has its own vibe and its own personality and its own politics. But, you know, what I like is when things go bad, Americans have a tendency to pull together. You know, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that's that's kind of the weird thing is uh, I've got a buddy. Um, I don't know if you guys met him because he was working with Texas Rescue. He got arrested about a year ago for uh, uh, actually threatening Donald Trump with his life. So it's like Secret Service came and arrested him. And yeah. It's like, but you were down there at the same time. And then I've got guys who are, you know, right, extreme, you know, Republican that are still down there doing the same thing. It's, it's weird that that is a type of natural disaster. kind of like what we saw in New York, uh, 9-11. It, it does unite us all. It all, all kind of does bring us together. We stop arguing about that, you know. Yeah, you know, but it's it's also interesting politically. Like, the country is so so big. You know, it's very hard to have cohesion, and I think that's why we have difficulty right now with COVID, right? Because everyone has their own, own opinions. Everybody, you know, wants each state is handling things differently, versus a place like New Zealand or or, or France or uh, Australia, where everyone's you know has kind of. Um, is more, uh, you know, ha has more hegemony. Everyone's sort of like, kind of, you know, plus or minus two to the left or to the right as far as their politics goes. And they were able to contain the virus versus us. It, it seems to me that the administration is just like, hey, you know what, learn to live with it kind of, uh, kind of policy right now. And, um, you know, we have an automatic de facto wall at the moment. I mean, I, ev everyone that knows me knows I like to travel, right? I like to travel overseas. I can't go anywhere. <laughs> you know? They don't want us, man. <laughs> I literally can't go anywhere. You know, I mean, if, if they find out that you're from the U.S. and you're flying on U.S. passport, man, t permission denied. You cannot come into the country, you know. So a buddy of mine wrote this on Facebook and I, it made me think. He said, the reason why Americans don't come together, it's because we're so used to seeing things blow up. So 9-11, something blew up, something came down and we're like, oh, shit. We got to help where COVID's like silent killer. Yeah. You, you don't see it. It's, it's not like someone invaded our country and just started spraying people down and people are just dying in front of you left to right. And you feel like we got to do some shit where COVID was like, it kills you silently. And people are like, yeah, people got to die. But if it was, you know, we got, you know, someone, let's say uh, someone um, put a bomb in the World Trade Center to us is like, oh my God, people just died right before our eyes because we're so in we like to see things blow up. What do you think? Um, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'll totally actually agree with that one. Um, there's also this very... Uh, uh, like, like Hurricane Harvey, right? Yeah, pe the, pe pe people saw the devastation. Like personally attacked, I guess. Correct. You know? Like Hurricane Harvey, when you were um, when you, when you, you're doing your service there, it's because people saw this in the flesh. Like, oh my gosh, this hurricane's coming in. Houses are broken down. People need help. Where with COVID, it's like, we know it's there, but people are not in agony, like, oh, help me. So, I don't know. Yeah. It's, we see images of uh, uh, bags. We don't see the actual bodies inside the bags. We, Correct. Uh, it, as, as a union, it seems like the psychology behind it is that unless we're directly affected by it, or, you know, my, my family or myself type of a thing, then it doesn't exist because I don't see it. Correct. It's an ostrich theory, you know? Yeah. And, you know, like, I think that's one of the um, uh, the shortcomings, I think, of our, our country is that 
we're almost too independent, right? It's almost like, hey, you know what? Pull yourself up. I think that, you know, here it's being exploited by the virus, right? It's like, hey, you know what? Um, if you're not, you know, pull yourself up, if you're not taking care of yourself and you get sick too bad. It's kind of like, it's kind of like that attitude, right? You know, <laughs> versus like other countries are like fully functioning at the moment. You know, they even have tourism, so long as they're not from the U.S. Yeah. The people, you know, people can go out to eat, people can hang out. Meanwhile, we're still arguing over where, whether or not to wear a mask, you know? Mm -hmm. Should we wear a mask? Should we and not then, wear a mask? You know? Well, and then, I just heard, I uh, watched a video on, uh, what was it, Night Fam? Um, they were talking about Taiwan, and Taiwan has, they never shut down. There's, like, virtually no cases from internal the country, and they're just right across the street, you know, from the epicenter. Yeah. Um... And it's just, it's amazing to me because here we're, uh, you know, my constitutional right to wear a mask and you're a sheeple if you do. Yeah. But also Asians, they're more disciplined. They're more disciplined in, in, in any aspect. Yeah. Almost all Asians, except for... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm Filipino. Um, and uh, He's half Asian. Filipinos have, uh, have Latino blood, so... <laughs> like, you know, I always like to tell people this, like, um, going to Manila and going to any um, big... Uh, city in in South America, you wouldn't you wouldn't tell the difference. It looks exactly the same, vibe exactly the same. Nobody nobody um, obeys traffic traffic signs or traffic laws. You got you know Jamie. That, that's an authorable country. <laughs> yeah, but dude, like I mean, it just it, it just was amazing to me. You know, like like it, it looked the same. Um, oh, here checks out. Actually, I had a friend from Africa. And, you know, he looked at me, he's like, man, Philippines ain't no third world country. And I was like, I agree with him because he's like, dude, have you ever been to Rwanda? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're comparing Africa, like, like Somalia, there is no yeah. comparison. He's dude. like, he's like, bro, in my country, we don't have these tall buildings. He's like, we don't bro, have roads, bro, man. Come in my on, country, man. we don't have cars. We have, we have cows. Yeah. You know, and he, he even made a joke. He was talking about how, you know, a lot of like westernized women, they want a thug. They want this like tough dude, you know what I mean? Like somebody to treat them bad. He said, "Bitch, you want a man like that? Shit, come down to Rwanda." <laughs> dude, I was like, you know, when when I said that, it put me, it put it into perspective, right? It's like there are some really, really rough areas in the world, you know. And what we think of a third world country, there's actually worse. <laughs> it could actually get worse. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like no infrastructure. Like complete lawlessness, you know. Like you know, money means nothing. You do everything via barter, or you farm. You have to like you know live off the land somehow if you have if you have that ability, you know. But e but check this out. Even those countries are allowed to travel, but we are not. So I, it, it just baffles me, you know. We can't leave the country. I feel trapped, you know. I feel like I'm in this bad science fiction. Well, movie. because those countries don't have an economy. Like America can take a couple more hits. But I don't think we could take more than that. Where Europeans, like, we already took a hit. We don't want another hit. That can really devastate our economy. Where in America, I feel like we could probably take two more of these. But that's it. Yeah. And that's pushing it. That's pushing I'm just it. being nice. Yeah. Right? You get what I mean? You get where I'm going from here. We could probably take maybe one good more punch in the gut. But we can't pretend like our economy is just going to bounce right back. No. Even if they did open up everything tomorrow, it's not going to be the same. No. People was like... There's still a lot of people scared, scared to go out and do anything, you know, um, you know, and rightfully so. Now Utah, you guys have some low numbers I was seeing, right? No. No, no we're actually uh, one of the higher ones. We're not as bad as like Florida, uh, but our our government here's dumb as hell. Like our society-wise for Utah, we hit our um, st like our attention span at 59 days, and then we were done. Mm. Um, everyone wanted to go out and reopen. We've got all these these idiots out there that are like, oh no, there is no COVID for whatever reason. Utah is full of flat earthers. Five G towers is causing COVID type of type of nut jobs. Mm. Um, I, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding, dude. It's it's they're weird out here. Um, governor Herbert, who's our uh, current governor, he reopened everything and he's actually putting everything on what like we did the color chart, so red, yellow, green. Um, you put everything on green, which isn't smart to do, especially places like Salt Lake where it's really, really bad. Yep. And then you get down into southern Utah, down in Navajo country, and he's still greenlit everything, even though they're suffering so, so much more. You want to know what? Um, you want to know what I just learned about Americans, man? So we know COVID's around, right? And what they do is 
they look at the states that are open florida so they're gonna take their unemployment money and go to florida utah oh everything's open there i'm gonna go to utah atlanta everything's open there. i'm gonna go to atlanta they're not disciplined they're so i need to get out i want to do things because i'm free this is my summer they'll go to yeah. any places that are open and i think that's why the numbers are jumping from whatever state open early and guess what they're gonna bring it back so I, you know what should have been done like it would have been impossible to do but they should have cut down uh, uh interstate travel yeah they should have said no more for at least three weeks yeah solid flights negative Nothing. you know what i mean travel Co interstate Co negative control your state yeah control your state yeah first no, no travel because right now you know from exp fr from like just personal experience i know people that are going to florida to this day because something is open in florida because or vegas right now it's open. vegas open yeah so guess what guess where we're gonna go to we're gonna go to vegas because f california right now yeah everything is closed i'm gonna go to vegas because the need to go out is more important than to control the situation so what do you guys think about that no man we got to take care of our people man that's what i've been arguing this whole time is that you know if we all had sucked it up for probably three weeks a month two months it probably been over by now when we'd be out of it yeah but instead it looks like this thing's going to continue and it's gonna it's gonna linger and we're stuck we're stuck you know and that's the worst part for you know selfishly for a guy like me you know is that we're stuck i can't i literally cannot go anywhere you know um i had plans man i wanted to go to europe europe shut down their borders for for u.s citizens you know <laughs> Boom. <laughs> you know, doesn't that tell you something? And this trip, is not a hoax. Trip out on this, man. Canada, they just passed a new stimulus bill. They're getting 8000 for the next four months, so 2000 a month. 2000 a month? Just stay in where you're at. They're getting 2000 a month. We got a damn 1200 and we're going on four months. Yeah, and like a lot of people haven't got it yet. No. A lot of people haven't gotten their 1200 and, um, I haven't. And, 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 and that's why we're not staying in, because the common anomaly is this. We all need to pay bills and we all can agree the government was not going to take care of us. So people rather put themselves at risk. For me and you, hey, don't close my business. If you don't want to pay me my money to stay open, then don't close my business, right? We're all, it doesn't matter if you're left or right. The common denominator is this. Our kids need to eat. People need to pay our mortgages. We want our kids to go to school. And if you're going to shut down the economy, you got to pay for it. And because we didn't do that, I feel like we're in this, this mess because the way we handled it. We, we, we slowed played it. We said, hey, two weeks. Two weeks became a month. A month yeah. became two months. The American people are sick and tired of it. They, they don't know what's real in, anymore because there's so much information that are getting passed around. Nobody knows which is which. And all of a sudden, everybody became a, a German uh, virus expert. Yeah, man, this, this is crazy, man. <laughs> they all read something and they all became an expert. They, you they, know, they, they know more than me. You look, know? It, ain't, it ain't no hoax. You know, the whole fucking world wouldn't shut the fuck down if it was fucking hoax. Yeah. Entirely hoax. That's I true. Can, I can see it's maybe exaggeration. Okay. But a hoax? Fuck no. Is it really killing people? Yes. You know, to what degree? And here's the thing, like some people are even accepting it. Well, it's only killing old people. Yeah. Well, fuck, man. What if it was your mom? You know, is that cool? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, here's the you thing. Know? Fuck. Your dad? Your grandpa? Is that an acceptable loss? Yeah. Collateral damage, man. This, you, know, you can't think like that. You know, no compassion, man. You know, and this ain't no red issue, a blue issue, Democrat, Republican, man. Liberals. Liberals, dude. No, 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 no. Just fucking fix the goddamn problem. We could argue about that shit later. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to come together, you know? Well, you know, if you take down the 5G towers, it'll fix everything. <laughs> Dude, the 5G towers, man, you know that shit's killing the birds. You know that shit's like killing birds, man. You, you know why they want... Shit, like when they fucking... You, you, the fucking you know why they want the 5G towers, I read, and maybe you guys can uh, confirm with this. Is it because they know that the new surveillance cameras, they need a higher data speed so they can track your face a lot quicker? I heard something to do with security. Uh, uh, where Big Brother's watching, big time. I mean, if you... Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> if, if you're tracking someone's face, I mean, you go to Vegas, they've got the, the best cutting edge, even stuff that the government and Google can't even touch. Correct. You know, when you go walk into a casino, they've already got your face tracked through the entire damn thing. Yeah. Um, their network is absolutely amazing. You go on a Facebook, it's, I mean, what are they, what are they going to do about tracking your face? You know, you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter. You're Facebook does a good, better. Facebook does a you good know, job tracking on. Five yeah. or whatever, they've, they've got you everywhere anyway. 
you know what? Like the 5G, I mean, I'm I'm okay with it. Like, although we all know that like these cell phones that we have now, I mean, yeah, they're emitting radiation. We know that it's probably killing us. Okay. Will I will I be okay with a 5G tower killing me a little less for faster internet? I mean, a little more, killing me a little more for faster internet. Yeah. <laughs> I think I Do it. But but here's the thing. Here, here's the Aaron thing. Was like, as you're drinking your tea. Notice how all of porn had and porn had a red tube within the first two months of quarantine. Why can't they just put Wi-Fi bands everywhere? Wouldn't that be this uh, equivalent? Right. Well, I, I mean, I guess it would be. I know uh, Elon Musk is working on that uh, that satellite train that's all five G. Because check it out, five G. I read that. It, it, it only works if you're in a vicinity within 10 to maybe 30 feet. Then you get the true 5G. Yeah. To me, that's like Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Yeah, just about. Just about. And, and, and because uh, I was watching this thing on YouTube and uh, uh, one of these YouTubers, he, he goes to a city, I think it was in Boston or something. And he, they had a, uh, a, a 5G tower, but he had to be pretty close to it within a 1 to 300 feet for it to even get uh, 5G. Wow. And, and if there's a tree block in it, you don't get the full 5G because if you know <laughs> radio frequencies, it's a higher pitch. Yeah. So it, ta it takes longer for that signal to travel. Well, that signal doesn't travel as far. It's not like a, 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 a base wave where it's much longer. So it can travel distance. Do you think yeah. you could fry an egg near one of those things? Like, let's say I like took my frying pan out and then like, you know, near a 5G tower. And what do you think? No? Wouldn't it be possible? Dude, you know what? I gotta ask you, I gotta ask you a serious question. Like, w Elon Musk, right? You mentioned Elon Musk. What do you think of him? You mm -hmm. think he's an alien? Or what? I've always wondered. Yeah. Uh, or is he like a lizard, one of those like alien lizards? For a minute. Huh? Um, he, uh, I mean, he's definitely crazy. Okay. Um, if, if you're looking at like what he's doing with SpaceX and OceanX, absolutely awesome. I mean, he's, he's actually really involved with it, doing a lot of stuff when he did up in Flint uh, with the drinking water, and that's still only the schools. I mean, their, their drinking water and their homes are still crap. Um, he, he's really badass there, too. Um, what he's doing with communications is awesome. What he's done for Tesla as a company, uh, they haven't made a profit since, like, yet at all as a company, and it's... Um, he seems more concerned instead of, like, fixing things like that, uh, you know, like the Model S and Model X problems. Uh, he'll just come up with something new, like the truck that window smash and these little, uh, I say Asperger's autistic -y, I guess, maybe. You know what? You know what? He, 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 he is about the environment. We can agree with that. And what if he didn't make Tesla to make a profit, but he made all the other manufacturers that say, hey, if you don't get an electric car, then you're going to lose this 100% pie of the, you know, piece of the pie. And he got them to make electric cars. So maybe he's like, I'm winning. No matter what, you got to charge your car somewhere. And guess what? I have all the charging stations. Who knows, right? It's a possibility, you know, yeah, like, who like knows? you know, he's, he's, he's wacky. Like he that. doesn't need money. No. So, no. so what if like he cared about the environment enough, let's just say, and he's like, you know what? I got all, he's probably laughing at himself. Look, I got, I got Chrysler to make all, all these, all these other car manufacturers. Porsche has an electric Dude. to compete against me. He Honestly. got every, everybody to get on, on, on the boat on this one. Dude, red-blooded American man to red-blooded American man. Would you drive that Cybertruck in I, public? I would. I would. Um, no. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I would, man. I, I mean, I would if it was free and um, I could uh, drive it until it ran out, but I wouldn't, I, I don't think I could... I bet. I want to bet money. I when just you couldn't put that much effort into it, you know? I, I bet. I bet. When, when you see that thing on the road, I, I think, I think, I don't know, man. I, I think when you see that thing on the road and you have a, 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 four, a quad in the back, you're going to want one. I'm going to put a drinking station on the door. J Jamie's going to want one. Guaranteed. Nah, you know what? Oh, yeah, like yeah. If, for the same price, I would get like a dually or something, man. Something big, you know, something that polluted the environment. I don't give a fuck. You know, <laughs> diesel, whatever the hell. Diesel is more pollution than... Than normal gas right you know hell yeah i drive that shit i take off the catalytic converters like no you know just start spewing shit into the fucking sky driving that shit around like, okay so uh, if diesel Santa Monica or something. diesel probably does pollute more than gas but 
I don't know the exact numbers and I don't know how, how much pollution diesel compared to regular cleaner gas is, but I can tell you this, diesel for a tank of gas, you can go a lot further distance. So you yeah. pump less gas. So I don't know. I yeah. think diesel wins. And then you know what, dude? Like, here's the thing, man. Like, the range on those electric cars in general, like 200 mile range. No, 280, I think, this one. 280, man, dude, that's still. I, I Bro, can... where are you going, 280? You can go to San Diego. No, yeah, exactly. And they got charging stations everywhere. Yeah, but, the, dude, and then the charging station, another 30 minutes, hour to, to hang out. That's just too long for me, man. I just can't do it. I mean, if I was like, a, a, you know, didn't have obligations and shit, dude, yeah, for sure. I don't give a fuck if I, you know, sit in my car for an hour charging my shit. But, but what if, what if, what if? the future all the charging stations become like a little uh you know like a little mini mall you can go get your car wash while you're charging your car you can go have dinner while you're charging your car you can go have a drink while you're charging your car what if who knows right we don't know the word of future holds. Oh, shit um here's the thing i hate people in general so for me <laughs> like that doesn't sound like you know wow it sounds great nah for me it doesn't sound all that appealing actually for me during this whole COVID thing i really don't miss a lot aside from the gym you know maybe like i like to go out you know get hammered by myself when i drink i'm one of those kind of guys I, I go to the bar by myself you know it's weird like a lonely depressed motherfucker that's what i do mm -hmm. i just generally don't like people you know and then like i like the fact now that nobody's hugging i hate it when someone goes oh give me a big hug dude i'm like oh, i was like god damn it why why handshake good enough for me fist bump elbow bump good enough but this whole hugging thing man well, passed, at least passed, you're not in passed, France, man. cause everyone gives you a kiss, even the oh, dudes. Oh, yeah, I know, man. I'll be like, you have know you what? been? Have you been? You know what I'm talking about? Have you been? All, all I'm gonna say is, next time I see you, when I come down to California, I'm gonna be like completely naked, minus a man thong, and I'm gonna lick your face <laughs> while hugging you with a passionate, warm hug. Yeah, you know what? And I, in California, I, that's okay. I'll pass. With all, you know, I know respectfully. That, I know you want to pass, but it's gonna happen. <laughs> See, now you're talking like one of those dudes that you <laughs> Yeah, it's going to happen no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here. I'll be here. <laughs> yeah, man, that's, not, that's the, just not my thing, man. Like, I, I, I like um, old school Asian culture where you stand six feet of, you know, you bow and, you know, that was, whoa, you know, he's showing a lot of respect, right? But this whole hugging thing, man, like, it's, it's I guess how I was raised, you know what I mean? I too had it hard, you know, I was beaten every day of my life practically, so I think that's probably why I, uh, um, you know, am okay with, with not being around human beings. I can see how, like, disgusting, you know, human beings could be, you know. You know, I, I went the opposite way. I, I don't like people at all. I have a friend who, I kid you not, he probably has not even noticed COVID-19 restrictions because he's like a fucking hermit. You know, he like lives by himself and his wife and a, and a dog. He avoids people mm. like like the plague because there is one, right? And he just, you know, we, we joke like you know for for my friend, uh, it's just it's just Tuesday. <laughs> you know, for him, he has no idea like COVID has even has even uh, uh, happened. So I don't know. That's just me. You know, just yeah. What about the people that live in like islands? You know, they, they don't know. If you're like a, you know, Native American somewhere, you don't know. You don't got TV. Dude, would you would you go to that one island where that dude got killed? Remember that place where, like, the oh. Cent Sentinelese Island? Remember yeah, that a couple the, years ago? The white guy goes? Yeah. Just to see what's up? Yeah. Like, they said, don't go there. The fucking natives are, are yeah, going to fucking kill they'll, you. They'll kill you. And then he came in there with, like, with a Bible, and they fucking shot him with an arrow. And then the fucking yeah. Bible saved his ass the first time. And I don't want to be racist, but that was white people, man. They they, they see something, they're like, hey, what, what is that? Let me go check it out, man. Let me let me go in and make sure it's okay. They no, just, but they're dude, like, they they're like him, a cat, dude. They gave him a pass the first time. They didn't kill him, and guess what? He did the next fucking day. He, he brought went, more white he, people. He he went back again, and they finally go. You know what? This motherfucker <laughs> fucking gonna kill this guy. Yeah. You know, like look. Well, hey, we let him go as a warning. He still keeps coming back. <laughs> just, he wants to die. Yeah, man. I I I just couldn't do it. I I, I couldn't be that guy where like, oh, don't go there. It's dangerous. And then you go there because you're an idiot, and then you see that it's dangerous, and you know you, you could potentially get killed. You you know your ass gets you, your ass survives, and you go back the fucking next day. To me, it's I, I don't know, you know. Um, but what I'm thinking, conspiracy theory wise, right, is that perhaps <laughs> is that perhaps they're protecting us from them. What if those people living in that fucking island have some sort of weird disease or something weird that 
you know, if they come into contact with the outside world, it could like infect everyone like worse than COVID. I thought about that shit. It's a possibility. Well, what Don't about what about they have great education? They have great education. They're like, nah, the colonizers had. Co- He's a colonizer. They're gonna come take our land. We're gonna kill them before they get here. Yeah. Who knows, man? Yeah, you know, it could be like. Uh, you see that movie Black Panther? I'm just sort of gonna shake my head not because I lost audio about a second ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was asking. Have you <laughs> have you seen that movie Black Panther? Like Wakanda? Like they pretend to be primitive, but they're really like super like super high tech, dude. High tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what's going on over there at Sentinel's Island. Yeah. Especially that's what it is, dude. Yeah. Well, look, man, if I saw dudes with spears and shit, I'm like, I'm not going there, dude. But then again, they're only like four feet tall. It don't right? matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter, dude. They hit you with a freaking poison dart. <laughs> yeah, man. And you know what? You don't know what, like, they've had, like, centuries to develop, like, all the different kind of poisons and, like, tactics to, you know, torture to, like, just fuck with somebody, man. You know, you don't want none of that See, shit. we're civilized. You put, you put us in the jungle, we die. Oh, very easy. We, we don't know what plants to eat. What we we just I, I die, bro. I don't know how to kill a pig with my bare hands. Oh, with your bare hands? No, man. You gotta like trick that shit. You gotta. No, make okay. It, like, us three, they throw us on the island. Okay, no no weapons. I mean, I could put some stuff together, but shit, I don't even know if I can make rub two sticks to start a fire, dude. Well, and on an island, I, you're actually okay. I I think on an island. No, but we're right. gonna we're gonna get thirsty. We gotta eat. We got to, uh, uh, us three, even us th- three minds come together. I mean. Dude, first and foremost, man, you got to fucking find water. First thing. Yeah. You got to find fucking You got to yeah. find water. Yeah. You, and you got to find fire. You got to heat, uh, you know. E- e- either we got to burn some salt water to make fresh water. I don't know, right? Yeah. We, we got we to gotta figure this out. Yeah. I think we do. I think at best we live two weeks, three weeks. <laughs> well, we'd always resort to cannibalism. After that, we get like another week or two out of it. Right. Well, like, Jamie, you're just, first to go, dude. You're the just, biggest. Like, draw straws. Yeah. No, that's not fair. We just draw straws. Like, hey, no, the bigger guy like, gets, is gonna be the first to be hungry, dude. Actually, I'd probably be the first to die because you're like, fuck, I'm so hungry, I'm gonna eat the. Oh no! Actually, guy. like, like if you're a bigger dude, like you just live off your excess fat. You yeah. know. That's how they used to do it. Like what I heard is like you just live off your excess fat. Like you know what? Actually, like eating every day is is kind of a modern thing. I don't think we could find enough food to to uh, satisfy our calorie intake. That's the problem. You get Honest used to, that to God, shit. you get used to that shit, dude. Like people didn't eat every day back in the day, or they would eat like once. No, if they they drop us us three right now in the island, uh, we can't adapt in two weeks, man. We die, weeks. dude. Without no tools, yeah. I think. Without no tools. No tools. Like we we we, we gotta you've find. Able, you've been able to adapt, dude. You got rocks, you got sticks, you got everything. Else, dude. That's what we Boy think. Scout? I think that's what we think. Well, it depends what island. What if it's like you know, like an island without shit? You know, like. Uh, it just doesn't have anything. Yeah, you'd be fucked. But if it's a tropical island, if it's a tropical island, you know shit grows on there, right? So you know that there's fucking coconuts. Yeah. A crack, like okay, some islands I agree with you. Some islands I've seen like in um, Man vs Wild, they have crabs, coconut, running uh, wild boar. Okay, definitely for sure. But I, I he also been to some islands where it's just all around the water sharks. Like how the hell? Like you're gonna die. Like, I think for me, like, one of the most things that would inconvenience me most is, like, just, like, with everything with COVID, man, like, no toilet paper. Right? Like, God damn it, no toilet paper. Which you is know, funny because, like, you know? remember, remember um, when everyone's buying all the toilet paper and uh, uh, sanita- sanitana- uh, sanitan- sanitizer? Yeah. Now, I go to freaking 7-Eleven, they got a shitload. Yeah. Where was that like, a month ago, man? Now they're, like, overstock. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy how everything just came back all at once. Yeah, well, when people thought that, like, you know, figured out the world wasn't ending, you know, they, they dialed back on buying all the TP, you know? Um, you know what? I, I, I realized something, dude. There are only some people that will use only two ply to wipe. Me, t- I would. Yeah? Yeah. To me, it doesn't matter. Like, so long as I got some shit tickets, it's cool. No, because the one ply, you just use more of it. <laughs> So this is what you have to understand, though, is you go to 7-Eleven, right, and you've got all the hand sanitizer now. What I see is alcohol, so I can numb the pine needles that I use to wipe my back since everyone stole the toilet paper. Hmm. You know, like, here's the other thing about, about the, the U.S. Like, we're, like, I think the only developed country that, that has that system, right? Like, um, for instance, when I, when I went to Japan, it's fucking great, man, right? Like, you could, like, they have these high-tech toilets, you know what I mean? 
like they wipe your, they, they, they wash your ass. You feel good afterwards, you know? And you're like, man, dude, like we're a little behind. The times, is, you know, with that, like we use globs of, 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 of hygienic paper, hygienic paper to wipe our butts with, you know? Wouldn't it be better to just have these toilets like set up with bidets or, you know? Uh... Well, that, that's the better route. So we have one minute. So you got to end the show, Jamie. All right. Aries, thank you so much, sir. You know me, I'm, I'm a fucking lunatic, crazy, out of my fucking mind. And you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a pleasure we having are, you, man. We are of the same same uh, cut. Yeah, it's a pleasure cut. having you because uh, this is uh, actually the first episode of season two. Season two, yeah, man. So yeah, we. So you, you're the. F- one, yay. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you you're leading the charge on this one. So we want to thank you for uh, for taking your time to be on our show and giving you uh, us some of your insight and wisdom about the self sex trafficking. Because I mean. I we didn't I didn't know it existed like, it's, it's, like that in Utah especially. No, it's significant. You know, I I, I like to fuck around a lot and and joke because uh, I think that um, for me personally, like I've I've I'm just done being serious. I don't like being serious anymore. You know, I was like once very very rigid. You know, very robotic, and I realized that you know, dude, life fucking sucked when I was that way, man. It was horrible. Yeah. All right, man. So thank you guys. Another show <laughs> under the. Got, we just got it done, like, so... Like finger guns. <laughs> All right, so take care. All right, we're signing off. All right, man. <laughs>